I'm going to show you how to make the large sewing machine from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabilizer per hooping and there are five hoopings, a selection of threads and if you want to make it reversible you will need matching bobbins as well. Some pins with heads on them, some masking tape, my squizzers, some thick string, and my fabrics and batting cut to size. I'm also going to be using some felt to act as a stiffener on each hooping. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below and if you would like to win Creative Kiwi loyalty points to the value of this design then please keep on watching as details will be given further on in the video. If you're using a traditional hoop, you're going to start off by hooping and pinning your two layers of wash away stabilizer. So place your two layers over the bottom frame, insert the inside, and then we're going to pin around the top edge of the hoop, and that's going to stop our stabilizer from being pulled down between the two frame pieces. So take your pin with a head on it, any pin will work, place it on the inside frame, push it through the stabilizer, bring it round, back through the stabilizer again and that's going to anchor it. You're going to do that on all four sides and the larger your hoop the more pins you will use. If you're using one of the newer magnetic hoops then place your two layers of wash away stabilizer over the frame, take your top and bottom magnets and just run them up your stabilizer and let them snap in place. Keep your fingers out the way because they will bite and I just pull my stabilizer taut and do the same in the other direction and then we do the same on the sides. And that's now ready to use. Load file one into your machine along with your matching bobbin and thread colour for the base of the machine. Pop your hoop in and then stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. And I'm going with brown. This next step is optional. But if you want to, to attach a piece of lace or a piece of fabric that, like I'm going to be using so that it looks as if the sewing machine's actually sewing then take your lace or fabric then you're going to place it face down and you want to use these two um, markers um, to guide you as to where it needs to go. So I'm going to place that there and tape it in place. Then we're going to place our batting over this outline here and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure them. the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut your stitches and if you've got fabric or lace under here make sure that you don't cut that either we're now going to place our fabric both front and back so turn your hoop over and because I want to stiffen this I'm going to place some felt down over the top on the back of my hoop first 
and then I'm going to place my fabric over the top. And I'm going to tape it in place. Now do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the wood grain effect on the base into your machine and then stitch round number four and I'm staying with the brown. Trim away the excess fabric and stiffener if you've used it both back and front of your hoop so turn your hoop over and take care not to cut your stitches. And take care not to cut your lace or fabric there. If you do happen to nick your stitching, there's a really simple cure. That's what sellotape was invented for. Take a piece of clear sellotape and just place it over the top and you're going to stitch through that no problem at all and that's going to hold everything in place while the zigzag stitching is going on and I'm going to do the same on the back because the stitching goes right the way through of course and that's that problem solved you're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag around the edge and then do the satin stitching on top so make sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread color for that loaded into your machine if like me you're going to add your thread bring your fabric down and then you're going to align this with this center marker here and tape everything in place I'm going to put tape all the way across the fabric and the string and I'm going to put a piece of tape at the top here so that it's all aligned with that marker We're now going to stitch the foot which is going to stitch over the top of our string here so make sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread color loaded into your machine for that and then stitch around number six and I'm going with silver We're now going to fold this back up out of the way while we stitch this area here so I'm just going to put place your batting over the bottom outline here which is the handle and tape it in place load your matching bobbin and thread color for the handle into your machine and then stitch round number seven and that's going to secure your batting in place and I'm going with black trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut your stitches 
we're now going to place our stiffener and our fabrics so turn your hoop over place your stiffener over the back and your fabric over the top and tape it in place now do the same on the front with your fabric pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight to secure it trim away the excess fabric and stiffener from both back and front of your hoop so turn your hoop over and take care not to cut your stitches making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching around the handle loaded into your machine you're now going to stitch round number nine and I'm going with black We're now going to remove our work from the hoop but before we do you want to roll up your lace or fabric or whatever you're using and your thread there so that when you cut out your pieces from the stabilizer that you don't accidentally cut them off. I've also drawn a pencil line from the tip of the stitch in there to the tip of the stitching there and the same this side because we're going to leave that triangle of um, stabilizer in place for now and that's going to make it easier for when we join this segment to the next segment later on so we're now going to cut away our parts taking care not to cut anything else and I can see the the line through the stabilizer here you might not be able to see it but I'm going to do there first so that I don't uh, make any mistakes later on you're now going to want a nice sharp pair of scissors and we're going to trim up the raw edge along here and on this piece here so that when we come to join it's all nice and neat so you want to cut close to the stitch line without cutting any stitches And that's our first hooping completed and we can set our segments aside for the minute we're now going to do the second hooping and this is for the top left segment of the sewing machine so that's the bit where the needle comes down from to stitch so hoop and pin your two layers of wash waste stabilizer if you're using a traditional hoop then pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you a place and outline for your batting and I'm staying with the black for now place your batting over the outline and tape it in place 
Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to place our fabric and the stiffener and the fabric you're going to place over this area here. So turn your hoop over, place your stiffener over the outline and then place your fabric and secure it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the decorative scroll work and machine detail into your machine. And then stitch round number four and I'm going with silver. So we're now going to clear this space for this fabric. So we're going to trim off this excess fabric both back and front. So turn your hoop over and just trim along there taking care not to cut any stitches. We're now going to place our fabric for this area here. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and you'll note that I haven't cut away the, stabler, the um, stiffener because I want that to be stitched down with the fabric and I appreciate that you can't see the, um, the outline but I can, um, it is there. So place your fabric over the outline and take it in place. Do the same on the front. Then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five and that's going to secure our fabrics and that part of the stiffener as well if, you're, if you've added any. And I'm staying with my silver thread for a minute you can put a neutral one in if you want to. Trim away all the excess fabric and stiffener from both back and front of your hoop. So turn your hoop over and take care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag all the raw edges. When you're deciding which colour to use, I would suggest you go with your lighter colour rather than a darker because it's easier to hide um, a dark, a lighter thread if it should it throw, show through in your satin stitching, which can occasionally happen depending on what fabric type you're using. 
so I'm going to stay with the silver and we're now going to stitch round number six so we're now going to join our previous segment the piece with the foot to this one and we're going to join it here you're going to align your um, thread or your string should I say if you've added one with this marker here and you're going to place the end of this stitching on this stitch line here so it should all line up nicely And I'm going to put a little bit of tape up here as well just to keep that out of the way. We're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag along here and join the two segments together. So just uh, check your join, make sure that you're happy with it. If you're not, unpick the zigzag stitching reposition your segment secure it in place and then stitch round number seven again if you are happy with it i've just put a piece of sellotape over the top of here just so, because we're going to stitch uh, the satin stitching around the the shank of the foot and i don't want my string to get caught in the foot of my machine so it's going to stitch right through it and then we we'll just remove any excess sellotape still showing afterwards I just do it as a precaution you might not want to do that but that's entirely up to you so making sure that you've got your thread color for the shank of the machine loaded into your machine you're now going to stitch round number eight and I'm going with silver We're now going to stitch round number nine and that's going to stitch the thread guide at the top here and it's also going to hold our string in place as well. So load your thread colour for that into your machine and I'm staying with the silver. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the uh, main body of the machine into your machine and then stitch round number 10 and I'm going with black load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching around this area into your machine and then stitch round number 11 and I'm going with dark grey So that's a stitch and finished and we can now free our work from the hoop. Make sure that you're careful when you trim around here that you don't cut any of the stitching. So just take it easy and same for down here as well when you come to do that. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge. We just need to trim up around here ready for our next join so cut along there taking care not to cut any of your stitches and that's our second hooping completed and we can set our work aside for the minute We're now going to do the third hooping and that's the top right side of the machine. So load file three into your machine along with your neutral bobbin and thread colour. So hoop and pin your two layers of wash waste stabiliser if you're using a traditional hoop. 
pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your place and outline for your batting and I'm going with the dark grey place your batting over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut any stitches. We're now going to place our fabric for the body of the machine over this area here and a stiffener on the back as well so turn your hoop over place your stiffener over the outline and then place your fabric over the top and secure it in place Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Before we can add our next fabric for the bobbin here, we need to trim away the excess fabric around this stitch line, both back and front. So turn your hoop over and trim it away, taking care not to cut your stitches. And you can, if you want to, trim along here, both back and front, to remove this area as well, because we're going to be adding a third fabric afterwards. So I'll do that now, and then I'll catch up on the back. We're now going to place our fabric for the cotton reel here. You might want to swap out your um, th thread for this, especially if like me you're using a light fabric and you've got a dark thread into your machine. So turn your hoop over, place it over the outline and tape it in place. So pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure them and I'm going with yellow and then place your fabric over the top and secure it in place. We're now going to add our fabric for the wheel on the side of the machine. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure them. And if you need to change thread colour, do so. 
I'm staying with the yellow. Before we go any further, we need to trim up anything that overlaps this area here. So along here and here, both back and front of the hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim away the excess fabric. We're now going to stitch round number six and that's going to give us our placement outline for the plate that goes on here. So load your thread colour for that into your machine. I'm staying with the yellow so that you can see what I'm doing. We're now going to place our fabric for the decorative plate here. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven to secure them. Before we can do the next round of stitching, we've got to trim up the excess fabric from around the edge of this decorative plate. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge, taking care not to cut your stitches. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching around the plate and the decorative stitching on the body of the machine into your machine and then stitch round number eight and I'm going with silver. We're now going to trim up all the excess fabric and stiffener from both back and front of the hoop. So turn your hoop over and take care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number nine and that's going to zigzag around the edge of the um, machine and it's going to stop where we come to do uh, to join our previous segment to this one here and I'm going with yellow. We're now going to join our previous segments to this one and because this bit I don't want this bit flopping around all over the place I'm just going to fold this up and just pin it together like that just for the minute. Okay we're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here and secure it in position so place it down 
and if like me you are using pins make sure that you keep your pins right out of the way of this stitch line here and I'm going to place a little bit of tape each side just to keep those corners down pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 10 to secure it and that's going to zigzag along here we're now going to place the handle on the uh, wheel here and you're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where the um, there's no um, zigzag stitching and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 11 to secure it and that's going to zigzag along here load your matching bobbin and thread color for the top of the cotton reel into your machine and then stitch round number 12 and I'm going with white load your matching bobbin and thread color for the cotton on the cotton reel into your machine and then stitch round number 13 and I'm going with yellow okay I made a mistake this thread should have been put underneath the satin stitching of the cotton reel but I forgot so I've stopped my machine before um, the stitching on the cotton had finished um, you can see that the, the, you might be able to see there there's a, a gap where it hasn't finished stitching yet and I'm going to add it in there so I'm going to bring that across here and just tape it down and carry on stitching I'm going to go back 10 stitches just so that my machine uh, um, fixes in and then carry on and I've stopped my machine again now that that's been stitched over and I just want to trim this tail off and then that will be all concealed by the satin stitching around the edge so I'm now just going to carry on load your matching bobbin and thread color for the satin stitching of the body of the machine into your machine and then stitch round number 14 and I'm going with black load your matching bobbin and thread color for the satin stitching around the hand crank wheel into your machine and then stitch round number 15 and I'm going with silver so that's the third hooping completed and we can now free our work from the hoop take care not to cut anything off or any stitches for that matter so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge we're now going to trim up along here close to the stitch line ready for the join in our next hooping And I'm just going to undo this so that you can see 
how it's looking so far. And that's our third hoop in completed. I'm going to pin this back up so that when we come to do the joining in the next hooping that it's not going to be flopping around everywhere. So we can now set our work aside for the minute. We're now going to do the fourth hooping which is the right hand side of the base of the machine. So load file 4 into your machine along with your matching bobbin and thread colour for the base. So hoop and pin your two layers of wash waste stabiliser if you're using a traditional hoop. Then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your place and outline for your batting. And I'm going with brown. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to place our fabrics and stiffener. So turn your hoop over, place your stiffener over the outline and secure it in place. And then place your fabric over the top and I can just see the outline through there. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread colour for the wood detail loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number four and I'm staying with the brown. Next are the words happy place. If you're stitching this, then change your matching bobbin and thread colour and then stitch round number five. If you don't want to stitch it, you can skip it and I'm skipping it. So now we're going to trim our fabrics and stiffener both back and front of the hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim away taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag the edge. We're now going to join this segment to this one and you're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here between the end and where the zigzagging around this border stops and secure it in place and if you like me you're using pins make sure that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line and I'm going to put a little bit of tape each side just to hold the edges down so pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag along here and join the two segments together. 
So check your join, make sure that you're happy with it. If you're not, unpick the zigzag stitching, reposition your segment, secure it in place and stitch round number seven again. If you are happy with it, we're now going to stitch round number eight and that's going to do the satin stitching around the border of the base. And I'm going with brown. So that's the stitching finished for this hooping. We're now going to remove this from the hoop, taking care of course not to cut our stitches or anything else underneath our hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge. We're now going to trim up around the raw edge here, ready for our next join in our next hooping. So take care not to cut any of your stitches. And that's our fourth hooping completed and we can set our work aside for the minute. We're now going to do the fifth hooping which is the leaves and the flowers. So load file 5 into your machine along with your neutral bobbin and thread colour. I'm loading hot pink into mine because that's the colour that I'm going to use for the satin stitching around the flowers. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser. Then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your place and outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut any of your stitches. We're now going to start placing our fabrics and the first one that we're going to place is this one here. So turn your hoop over, place your stiffener over the back and secure it in place. If you're using one that is. <laughs> okay, and it's this one here which translates to this area here. If I pull that back, you'll be able to see it's this one here. So place your fabric over that flower and secure it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. So before we can lay the fabric for our next flower, which will be this one here, we need to trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line of the, those flowers. And I'm going to do this one at the same time. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge. Taking care, of course, not to cut your stitches. Okay. 
Okay, so we're now going to place our fabric over this area here, which is the, over here on the back. And secure it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure them. Before we lay our fabric for our third flower, we're just going to trim up around the edge of the stitch line again. And while we've got it, the hoop over on the back here, I'm going to place my fabric over this area for the third flower. And tape it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure them. Before we lay our fabric for the leaves down, we're going to trim up around here. So turn your hoop over and take care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to place our fabric for the leaves. So turn your hoop over and place it over the outline and secure it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six to secure it. I'm going to stay with the pink for the minute. Now that we've finished adding all our fabrics, we're now going to trim up all the excess fabric and stiffener from both back and front of the hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edges, taking care not to cut your stitches. Okay, so it's competition time. If you would like to win Creative Kiwi loyalty points to the value of this design, like, subscribe, share, and tell me how old you were when you first learnt to sew and on which machine. This competition will close 6 p.m. Central European time plus two on Sunday the 21st of January 24, and a winner will be picked at random from all the valid entries. So be sure to check back and see if it's you. Good luck and thanks for taking part. We're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag all the way around the raw edges. And I'm staying with the pink.
We're now going to position our previous segments onto this one and I'm going to um, fix mine both at the same time rather than do one at a time. So we're going to, I'm going to turn my hoop round that way so that the leaves are sort of southwest and we're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where there's no zigzag stitching and this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where there's no zigzag stitching like so so I'm going to start off with this side and if like me you're using pins make sure that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line And I'm just going to trim a little piece of this off just so that it doesn't get in the way. That's better. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to place a little bit of tape each side just to hold those edges down. And I'm going to do the same this side. And again, keeping my pins right out of the way. And for this edge here, I'm going to use a little bit of sellotape and let my machine stitch right through it. I'll put a little bit of tape this end just to hold that edge down. Okay. So that's now ready to stitch. So we're now going to stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag along here and join this segment to the flower. So check your join, make sure that you're happy with it. If you're not, unpick the zigzag stitching, reposition your segment, secure it in place again, and then stitch round number eight again. If you are happy, we're now going to stitch round number nine, and that's going to zigzag over this join and join these two segments together. And I'm staying with the pink. Check your join, make sure that you're happy with it. If you're not, unpick the zigzag stitching, reposition your segment again, secure it in place and then stitch round number nine again. If you're happy with it, load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the first flower, which is this one here, into your machine and then stitch round number 10. And that's going to do the satin stitching. I'm staying with the same pink all throughout, but you can change um, for each flower if you want to. We're now going to stitch round number 10. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching of this flower here into your machine and then stitch round number 11 and I'm staying with the hot pink. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching of the leaves into your machine and then stitch round number 12 and I'm going with green. Load a matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching of the last flower into your machine and then stitch round number 13 and I'm going with hot pink.
Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the centre of the flowers into your machine and then stitch round number 14 and I'm going with yellow. So that's all our stitching completed. We can now free our work from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches or anything underneath your hoop. All that remains for us to do is to remove the excess stabiliser from around the joins and the edges and we're going to start on the back with the joins so turn your work over, take a cotton bud and some warm water and just run it around the edge. I'm just going to give this a light press here and then I will be back. And that's our gorgeous antique sewing machine finished. I'd like to give you a couple of tips for yours. If you're going to use fabric like I have, iron some interfacing on the back just to stop it fraying over time and then you don't have to worry about the edges. And when you come to do the zigzag stitching use a thread um, that's very very light something like white or something like that because if you get it poking through like I have uh, and it was bound to happen because I used a, a dark pink so that you could see you can easily cover it up with a sharpie marker if it's lighter than your top thread so you just go over it just touch it up with a sharpie and I just dab rather than um, scrub it's easier to control that way without getting your pen all over your work and then I would just go around and touch it up and there we have it I hope you've enjoyed this stitch long. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.